Why was everybody freaking out about that game-changing, season-altering win? Well, look, he, here's how he, here's how I kind of framed it with Joy on Friday. Yeah. I feel like what happened with the Lakers is a lot like what's happened at both the places with, that we've worked. Yeah. That happens in other places in business where – New boss comes in, and in this case, LeBron James. Yeah. And the first three months, he's everybody's friend. Yeah. And the next three months, he kind of figures out what's what. And then six months in, somebody gets fired <laughs> and somebody gets replaced, right? Yeah, right? In this case, it was just Fima Hailuk and and Zubach get moved. Yeah. And they bring in Mike Mascala and they bring in uh, Reggie Rodney Bullock. Bullock. Yeah, Rodney. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they bring in uh, uh, Reggie Bullock, sorry. Um, and, and those are, and, and I do think that they needed perimeter shooting. But but the fact that it it covered up how poor they are defensively with LeBron James. Like, the one thing that LeBron gave you was this versatile defender, but he's not the same. Yeah. And then Kuzma, who struggles defensively, and Rondo's a wildly overrated defender at this point in his career, as opposed to Lonzo Ball. Um, look, on the court, the Lakers are working through. It's They play completely differently without LeBron as opposed to with LeBron. And then having Lonzo, not having Lonzo, having Rondo, not having Rondo. But I was alarmed at LeBron not really having juice yesterday after two days off. I, I know he went to the Virginia Duke game and he's allowed to do so. Like he's allowed to be a human being. But you show up midday game and he just was kind of out there. And Philly had a better roster and just thumped him, whooped him every give 143 points. My goodness, that was awful. Yeah, and Ben Simmons can't shoot, and they gave up that. And Markel Fultz can't either, and he's gone. You, yeah. you know, you know when, you, when you listen to Magic afterwards, or excuse me, beforehand, when he talked about how New Orleans didn't operate in good faith, I mean, that's what I'm hearing out of the Lakers is, hey, all of those trades that were supposedly proposed by us, it's not close to what we proposed. All of those leaks were coming from New Orleans. They were simply trying to poison the well, and it worked. It probably poisoned Boston's well as well in that Boston, who does have interest in Anthony Davis, the idea of who could be gone. But, uh, you know, look, the Lakers were kind of duped into this negotiation that was never meant to be. And frankly, the media was duped into it. And Magic's lack of saying anything. Magic tried to kind of operate stealthily and just really negotiate in good faith. It spiraled out of control, and they could not control the narrative. Uh, by the way, uh, you and I disagree on this. Um, Steve Kerr came out. LeBron James has come out and said, listen, man, this is a soap opera. This is a big component to why we get paid so much. And the Knicks put out Kevin Durant on a season ticket renewal. And I, I, I don't – it doesn't bother me because I think rebuilds are a bunch of hooey. I think the process was a joke. Basically, the process was uh, – we, we hit on the MB draft pick, but he can't play for two years. And we love Ben Simmons, but now he's dating a Jenner and he doesn't improve. In the end, they got Jimmy Butler – that's why they now Wait, you didn't you just watched the Philadelphia 76ers. They're not they went from tanking. Tanking works. It worked with the Houston Astros. It worked with the Boston no, no, Celtics. No, no, it it worked with the Milwaukee Bucks. It what? works with the Philadelphia 76ers. What do you mean, do you mean it's, it's working? These teams haven't won anything seven years in. You, you don't you don't have a successful season simply if you win a title or don't win a title. That's not that's not so the, Milwaukee is what? They've won one series in 19 years. It's well, working. Well, well, they're not there yet, but right now they have the best record in the East and arguably the league's MVP. I would say it's working pretty okay, well. The Boston so, Celtics have been in the Eastern Conference Finals the past two years after winning a championship, then making a couple of great trades, then tanking, then getting back. Like, well, I, Okay, I so I this understand. morning, Kyrie Irving's hurt. Anthony Davis is not going there. Gordon Hayward doesn't mesh. This is how it works? Well, look, the fact is you took on Kyrie Irving and you won that trade. Kyrie did get hurt and he tweaked his knee again, but the Boston Celtics are pretty good. Like, could they have foreseen that Gordon Hayward would break his leg in half in the first two minutes of time in the Boston so Celtics? So you don't, you don't like this tampering stuff? No. No, where is Adam Silver? <laughs> I, I, it's not just that I don't like it. Nobody in the NBA outside of the Lakers and the Knicks and, and a couple of the teams in the big cities or, you know, teams with big name players likes it because no player is safe. I mean, like, look, the, the NFL teams, ask them. You have sources within both, both leagues. Ask them what they think about the NBA, and they'll tell you, man, where is the leadership? 
Where is somebody shutting this thing down? Like, you can't do that. Like, I know nobody feels bad for Golden State because they won 73 games. Right. They lost Harrison Barnes, and they went and got Kevin Durant, yeah. and they upgraded. Yeah. Nobody feels bad for them. But if this was any other team, mid mid-sized market team in the league, like, there would be an uproar. He's a member of the Golden State Warriors. He's under contract. And by the way, he could be under contract next year. It's a player option. Right. He is not just a complete free agent at the end of the season. He's still under contract after this year. And you're openly opining for him to be on your season ticket renewal? Like, that's bad for business. That's Adam Silver. Zero leadership. Well, I mean, Adam Silver and the knock on him, I think, is fair. He is very pro-player. And he is into the players. But my argument is... He doesn't is work for the players. He works for the owners. That's Roger Goodell works for the owners. Rob Manfred works for the owners. He is... he. He represents their interest, and then he works with the Players Association. Head of the Players Association works for the players. Head of the head of the uh, the, the commissioner works for the owners, and there is zero leadership there. Yes, he is. There's a there's a difference between player friendly, okay, and player and, permissive. And yes, and that's that's the difference. It's just like you, we've, you and I have talked to us about parenting, right? Right. There's a difference between you know, listen being a little bit lax with what you make your kids do and do they have to make their bed every single day and hey here's the keys to the to the Porsche there's a full liquor cabinet I'm gonna be gone skiing for the weekend try not to make anything bad happen that's basically what Adam Silver's doing well no no listen it is the the media loves Adam Silver because the media hates power and the NFL has power and everybody thinks Roger Goodell's done a terrible job to which I say have you seen the NBA ratings and revenue over eight to ten years with Goodell. They're doing fine. Let me segue to this. Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott did two things you should never do. Talk about a guy's wife and talk about a guy's money. He did both. <laughs> Bringing up Giselle. I just don't get it. And I don't uh, – uh, Dak, uh, I, I just – so here's the sound on Dak. All right, what do you make of that? He's feeling himself, right? He's feeling himself. He's like, look – I've been working for pennies, which he has been because of where he was drafted. And I was at a place, and for people who know how the CBA works, he, he was unable to renegotiate his contract. And yeah. so he's right to say, like, look, maybe you're going to overpay me, but you underpay me for three years as a starter. But but it, it, it misses the mark, right? It just misses the mark, especially when it's not like you had an even season. But And he has every right to feel in negotiations like, hey, look, this is the way it works. You know, Matt Stafford got paid more than anybody else. And, you know, name Jimmy Garoppolo started for five games in San Francisco and got more money than everybody else. That's the way the business works. But it misses the mark where you're basically saying, hey, the only reason Tom Brady took less was because how much money Giselle makes. News flash to Dak Prescott. He was taking less money than top dollar before he was even with Giselle Bunchton. And, oh, yeah, by the way, that's the way in which you field a great football team. The truth is that there's going to be a negotiation there between the Cowboys who don't have to give him a new contract. He's under contract next year, and they can franchise tag him the next year. They don't have to give him a next contract. And top dollar. And somewhere in between the two is where they're going to land. And that probably determines the ability to surround Dak Prescott with all of the talent he needs to succeed. I don't view Dak Prescott as a top seven, top eight, somewhere kind of middle of the road. Oh, I think 16th is generous. Okay. So if you go 12 to 18 at quarterback, like, it's hard to find somebody to replace him, but let's not act like he's irreplaceable. He's And he's been at a value. But there does come a point where he's going to price himself out of the market, and the Cowboys can go, hey, we're good. You can play for a couple hundred grand next year. We're, we, we do not have to offer you a new deal. By the way, you know, it, it, it's interesting when you uh, – there's a new football league. This, the uh, AAF? Yeah, the and, I mean, I, and again, I'm not, I'm not saying Lions. that – but I will say this. As I watch it, my takeaway is – these are not – the NFL wants these leagues to work. That's sure. not the way it used to be with Donald Trump and the USFL. Well, the, Donald Trump was trying to steal their players. That's right. I think – I'm watching this thing, and my takeaway is one or both of these leagues are going to work. Well, I, I don't think there's any doubt they will work on some, on some scale level, right? Like they're making, I think in this league, 70 grand non-guaranteed first year, 80 grand non-guaranteed. So you have to keep the salaries – at a, at a lower <clears throat> level and have the non-guaranteed deals. We see some of these hits are vicious. I, I do wonder, if we look at the, the, the ratings, everybody's freaking out over the, the 2.9 and that they beat the NBA yeah. and the overnights. That's Remember, one night. That's one night, one yeah. week. The XFL got uh, over an eight, nearly a nine. <laughs> and therefore, you know, pay those ratings. Now, the XFL also had a lot more promotion. Um, 
Look, I, I think this is a lot like the G League. Like, if you watch the G League, there's a lot of really good players in the G League yeah. that will play on an NBA roster. My question is, you know, as they expand the G League, as they pay a little bit more, can you keep it going? Because if you don't have the logos that we grew up and you don't have the star players, are you really – Are you, you actually watched – yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, this is in, in, it's business to me. To me, this is all a business. I think this is going to work. I think the XFL is going to work. I think they have network backing. And I think we have an insatiable appetite. I said this in Spain, they don't stop caring about soccer when the Real Madrid season or a season ends. It's a 12 month sport. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.